two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. Was popping, was popping, was popping. This is Nikki. This is going to be the disclaimer. I'm not here for his antics or whatever it is. Like how if you hate him or you love him, that's your opinion. I'm cool with it. We're gonna go based off facts and what he's done. Okay? Mm. I'm not gonna go so for too much of his actions per se. You'll see where we're going with this. But let me just get into this intro. Let me let me just get into the intro. With 21 Grammys, six consecutive number one albums, one of the most impactful voices to ever grab a microphone, mm -hmm. one of the most talented producers to ever produce music, fashion, art, one of the most prolific people to ever speak on behalf of his thoughts to trigger emotions and trigger thought of you. Mm -hmm. One of the most clever people to ever manipulate the internet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I watched him go from, sweat, you gotta hear my rhymes, man. You gotta hear my rhymes. I know I make beats, but you gotta hear my rhymes. Being on a train, okay, Amtrak train, going to Philly, to now being mentioned alongside the President of the United States, more than once. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about President yeah. Obama, but you forget some of the things that this man has said to really go against the grain and challenge thought right. fearlessly. My man, off top, 21 Grammys, 69 nominations, 10 albums. Produce for people like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Britney Spears, John Legend, Brandy, so much more. Produce, production skills are off the chain. And of course we know him as a rapper, but we really gonna break this guy down because he's been in the game. Moose, how long has he been in the game? Like. Quite a bit. I mean, uh, two, two thousand and was it like two thousand early two thousands? Mm -hmm. I know that. Like definitely before two thousand and three or so. Mad years, and I, I'm lost. I'm really like I'm so excited. I'm lost for words because he's not only just like a pure innovator. Like he is the. I feel like if creativity was like a whole page in the dictionary, it would show Kanye. Like what he makes, how his energy, his thought process, his manu his movement is just unreal. I mean, we'll start 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 off with your thoughts cuz I, you know, I I'm going to go straight to the videos. I'm just going to go. So Go with your thoughts. So what you have is a really interesting evolution, right? And and it's almost easy to say, but he has evolved in a lot of different ways. And by the way, the evolution. Pass, like, wait. Take a <laughs> uh, classic moments. Uh, and evolution doesn't always have to mean forward progress on every single movie he made right like everyone will make their argument like yo there's some things that he's done that are questionable and like you said this is not necessarily that type of party where we're trying to uh, nitpick him apart for all the bad things he's done right. because truth be told we've all made those type of mistakes or have made mistakes in our own right mm -hmm. but uh, to see where he is now a family man a husband a father uh, obviously a business owner and is slowly but surely transitioning his 
career from a from a musician or an artist mm -hmm. yet still making music that fits his age and where he is in his current stage mm -hmm. i think that's really cool because i think when we when we broke down 50 we saw that 50 was indirectly kind of saying like i'm pretty much too old to be running around with the young rappers that are in the game right now so i can serve as a mentor from time to time but i can't make that same type of music because i'm just not in that frame of mind it wouldn't be authentic or true mm -hmm. so but you can't really say that 50 has put out music that anyone cares for respectfully again mm. but kanye though right come on now well come i think i think kanye has, was a like he's a forward thinker so he instantly makes music that is not for this time he right. makes it for us to really appreciate it years down the line right he's always like always thinking future i think um one of one of his quotes that he says let me put it up real quick um my greatest award is what i'm about to do i'm always thinking about the future like if if we really think about when his albums came out like we didn't understand it then mm -hmm. right we appreciated it but we really didn't understand it then if we go back and listen to what for example uh 808 heartbreaks that was a horrible album when it came out i'm sorry it was a horrible and then i listened to it and i was like there's a few there's a few i could appreciate now there's a few that are are fire actually mm -hmm. um so he's always thinking ahead even when he first started so let's let's break it down like this there are two types of kanye there's the old kanye and the new kanye majority of you know the new kanye majority of you know the rants and some of the antics i, I get it right but we're gonna dive into the core of Kanye so you can maybe understand don't have to agree maybe understand some of the stuff that he said or whatever because I feel like and me and Moose talked about this earlier um I can't sit here and say that all of the things that Kanye has done is right or wrong I think it's more towards his perspective of things and his opinion that he's crafted in his head who are we to say that it's wrong but we'll get into that a little bit later i want to get into the first video you ready moose let's get it all right let's get it he said i was always the weakest rapper out of the people in the group you know what i'm saying it would always be like somebody who really had it but they just didn't have a passion for it but i had to every night i was working every night i just like, it wasn't nothing that was going to stop me. Like, people would look up and they're like, yo, I just heard of Kanye. Like, I've been doing this since really, like, yo, telling my teachers, like, man, I, I might not even have to turn on my homework this year because I'm going to be signed this year. You know what I'm saying? Back in seventh grade. I mean, I told my gym teacher freshman year, like, man, I ain't coming to gym class no more. I'm going to be signed this year. She going to come to me senior year like, yo, what was up with that record deal? Yep. So... This is, this is my thing, right? He had so much hunger and passion in the beginning of everything. And I think still till now, right? A little, maybe a little bit less, but before, when he first started, he was like, yo, I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to get in, in front of anybody and I'm going to rap and I make amazing beats. And people knew him for his beats. People knew him for his production. His production is genius. He spent hours in the basement, right? Hours. Like, didn't come out. Like, he created his own world of creating beats. He has his own style. But he was like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to show them my beats i'm going to play my raps and see if it hits somebody's going to think i'm dope 
I'm going to continue to to get in front of people's faces. This is who I am. This is my passion, right? Some people would have thought he was lame. Like, you look at that clip. I actually text CJ. I was like, yo, he is the epitome of lame back then. Like, he was like, yo, put me on, son. Put me on. What we doing? Put me on. Hey, yo, 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 look. Put me on, right? But he didn't give up. And so remember this, everybody who's watching this, remember, we're still going to do our segment of, you know, what is he? So these first couple of videos are going to give you clues and then we're going to have a whole conversation about it. So remember what I'm saying, though. But um, I just admire, like, regardless of what anybody said, he was still in his mind the greatest rapper. Though we loved him for his beats. In his mind, he's like, yo, I'm the greatest rapper. I'm, this is what I'm going to do. Moose, what is, what is your thoughts with that? It, his part was when you talk about he knew that if I don't have access to the music game, mm -hmm. none of what I want to do unfolds the way it does. Right. Now, again, I don't know if he was thinking – of himself as a designer back then. Mm -hmm. But early on, there are multiple clips in some of his documentaries where he's talking about art, mm -hmm. where he describes that the way his mind works is through colors and pictures. That's how he sees and conceptualizes the world. So I think this is someone who, it may have been a stretch, but I don't know that Kanye wasn't successful or wasn't accepted and quickly embraced because of his lack of talent. Because again, you know, just so that I'm staying true to what I teach clients and everyone that I work with, I never want to help someone to manufacture a non-talent. A non okay. I'm always advising someone to stay true to their talent. But if you think about it, I don't think that Kanye's lack of embrace from the community or the, the, the hip hop, other hip hop artists or just the music industry in general was due to his lack of talent. I think it was more so because of how he came off. The kid with the book bag wearing pink polos at a time where people were wearing 5X, 3X, you know what I'm saying? Mm, so, but you have to understand his circle. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna sit here and say that he was good Back then, okay, good compared to a Jay-Z, a Nas, a Mos Def, a Talib Kweli. Like, this is the people he was surrounding himself with. These are the people sure. who made B B.D. Siegel. Like, so when he says, and, and, and we're going to get to the next, um, next clip, which kind of talks about it, right? He, though he wanted to be a rapper and one of the best he knew in his mind that he wasn't up to that par but he did have something else to offer he did have something different to offer that people should listen to at the time no one was trying to listen to it because we were catered to a jay-z and yep. nas kind of vibe so if we're comparing right no i wouldn't say even almost to this day Kanye as a rapper, mm, Kanye as a producer, different story, right? Hmm. Really? But, uh, so you don't like Kanye in terms of He's his creative. ability to conceptualize music. I mean, lyrically as well. Lyrically, and we'll get into it. Lyrically, he had a team. So can we legitly say that he is up to par with a Jay-Z when you have a whole brainstorming team to help you create your rhymes. I don't know. That's a Diddy move. I don't know about that. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that Kanye doesn't write his rhymes. That's not what I'm saying. But he, he got in the door, which I, I want to stay on kind of. He got in the door by his beats. He wanted to be in the music industry, period, right? And so he, as he was working on mastering his craft about rapping, he mastered 
beats. He master sure. production. Like you cannot, that I don't even think that anybody holds weight to Kanye's production. Yeah, and that me, you can't argue with. Right. You can't argue with his ability to produce. Uh, just period. So, and, and to okay, so healthy conversation. When you put them two together, what is what is what's best? What's what's the best one? Rapping or producing? Well, I just feel that, and here's my here's my devil's advocate to your devil's advocate. Mm. <laughs> Why can't we say that this is someone who's untapped his genius so much so that he knew that while I can be in my introverted ways and use my ability to see colors and pictures and sound and produce music, mm -hmm. I know that lyrically I need help to conceptualize my words mm -hmm. or be able to tell the story or the narrative that I want to bring to life. Wouldn't, wouldn't you consider somebody a genius when he's able to know that that is an area he may be lacking in and has built the relationships around him to help support that? That makes him a genius? I don't know about that because, I mean, so... Well, he's not. And, so, I, and again, so, I was about so, to say he's not arrogant, but um, that's not true either. Yeah, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> um, it, we'll go into this in another episode. Little Wayne's another genius, mm -hmm. right? Little Wayne has similar uh introverted ways as far as creating your own world right um you ain't never hear little wayne have a brainstorming team you ain't never hear anybody uh say that we're little wayne's reference so but does little wayne produce his own music or his own it's his own beats does he produce the way a Kanye he's, would but he's a rapper he's not a rapper producer he's a rapper okay. so that just because you're a rapper you don't have to have that same like J. Cole has that kind of vibe right as far as oh, I can the, the combo I can yeah. I can rap and produce right but not every rapper has that and they don't have to mm -hmm. but I still think Kanye's best thing is producing right and he, when you say something over and over and over and over again, I think you get people to realize, understand what you're trying to say and almost like believe it. So Absolutely. the fact that he said, yo, I'm going to be your favorite rapper. I'm the best rapper out there. I'm a rapper. 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 I'm a rap. And I do rap albums and I'm going to do all these things. You instantly go, yo, Kanye is a rapper. Why? Because he is persistent. Why? Because he's getting on top of tables in every, uh, in the Rockefeller um, buildings, in Facebook, at every place, getting on and I'm going to rap. Any group that I'm at, I'm, I'm going to rap. He's going to make sure people know that he is a rapper, regardless if his beats are better or not. So you can only respect Kanye for being that passionate about something that he wants to do when he he said when I put my mind to it I'm going to do it uh one of the interviews I don't remember his name the guy who interviewed him he was like yo so you're saying if you wanted to be in the NBA you could be in the NBA he's like absolutely no Kanye you can't yes I can let me put my mind to it I'm going to but I'm going to be a rapper and so once you put your mind to and you say it over and over and over again, you're going to get other people to believe you because you're so credible with your production and you no one could touch him on that end that, okay, we'll see what you're doing. You're collaborating with Jay-Z. You're collaborating with this person, that person, Drake, all that great stuff. You must be fire because the fact that you're on that caliber and these are top tier rappers – you have to be in that in that ballpark as well. I don't necessarily think he's the greatest rapper, but he said it, so I'm going to believe it. Really? So you so you're saying it's because he said it or it's because he was endorsed by a Jay-Z? I think because he put it in our face so much and because his his beats were he put his raps over his beats. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention now. And it's better than majority of rappers out there, absolutely. Like if I, 
random person. If I compare him to a chingy, yeah. If I compare him to a, even almost to a ludicrous, possibly, maybe. That's still debatable. Hmm. Man, and I guess part of me is also thinking, as 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 intelligent as he is, I think Kanye also realized that had he just stuck to producing, and and, and I'm not talking bad about this person. I love this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, people say I look like him all the time, and mm-hmm. I think it's kind of cool. It is what it is. Okay. Swiss Beats. Hey. Right? But if, if you know, shout out to Swiss. <clears throat> but if you if Kanye sticks to just producing mm-hmm. at the top of his game, he's like a Swiss and Tim. uh, even Timberland. Right. Yep. But I think him strategically saying like, man, I can't just be that. I want to be more. Mm-hmm. I think that helped him elevate his game to where he is today. I don't think Kanye is the, he doesn't have the leverage he needs to establish his brand. If he's just a producer, I don't see it. I, th- I think he, he is, and we'll get into it. I just think he is a, he knows how to market. He knows how to brand. And not sitting here saying that he can't rap. I There's a bunch of albums that I love. There, there's one that's a pure classic, right? Which is that? Uh, the Dark Twisted Fantasy. Okay. Hands down. Like that one and of course the first one, College Dropout. Like classics. College job was a classic. Yeah, yeah. classic. Um, however, I know you have a team. As a hip hop fan, I can't instantly put you on top tier like that if I know you have a team. Okay, I that's respect like, it. That's like I see Diddy. where you're coming from. Yeah, you coming like more Diddy. from like the music game. I'm thinking more from a strategic business standpoint. Kanye played his cards right because he almost stacked his talents based on what he needed to be who he is today. I just don't think Kanye has the amount of pull he has if his if he's just a producer. So Nick, I, I see Nick what you're said, saying. Hold on. You're saying said, like, you late, can't compare him to... Late registration you know? and 808 were fire too. And they were, but 808 at the time was not. And I don't want to even hear... That was in the core of auto-tune. When Kanye auto-tuned that whole thing, I don't think so. But we'll get into it. I, I promise you, I'm not trying to make this too much into a music joint. It's just I feel very passionate about Kanye. So this is going to go based off what we were just talking about. So watch this for me. It wasn't just that I'm good. I'm not, I'm not that good of a rapper. I mean, I'm getting pretty nice, you know. I'm getting pretty but nice. But you're not that good. Yeah, I'm no Jay-Z. I'm no Nas. But I got a niche. I got my thing. And what do you think you can do with your thing? I could talk. I, I could talk to the people's soul. And I, I'm kind of like that. Me and Dave Chappelle blew at the same time. We're the exact same person. Almost. Is that right? You yes. are. You and David Chappelle. Yes. Because we talk about real issues. We talk about racism, and we put a, a, a twist of humor. Hmm. What say you? What say you? <laughs> what say you? I was going you to... was evil. You had that cooking oh, in the back the whole time, knowing like, absolutely. oh, let me take him further. Absolutely. In. No, no, I'm gonna I'm <laughs> have this conversation. I'm gonna have this conversation. But he's yeah. different. He admits, yo, I'm not going. I'm I'm nowhere on that level. But I speak on topics that possibly people won't like me for. And he does. Yeah. Right. But, Pe- but I don't think it's so much to that that they don't like him. You know how it is. Every time somebody starts to say something that is not something people are used to hearing, mm-hmm. it's always rejected. It's always faces some level of resistance. And and there are there are parts of his interviews where he's like, the hood doesn't doesn't accept of me. Right. Like he he cares about that, I guess. But he cares I, what I people think he he. And- like we'll get into that. He cares what people think. Like sure. he that's why if he didn't care what people thought, he wouldn't be in people's faces like, "Hey, I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper." In the very beginning, "Yo, look at me. Look at me. I'm rapping. I'm rapping." They're like, "Yeah, cool. Let me get that beat though." Let me Jay-Z was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that beat though. Let me get that." Like I I'm he knows where he stands. And I think 
based off the credibility of his production, it got him in the door. He mastered one thing. It got him in the door to be able to do what he loves to do. Mm -hmm. Which then got him into the door of being to do other things later on. You have to get, you have, whatever you do amazing in, whatever you're dope in, is always going to be the gateway of something that you honestly just love to do or want to be known for, right? But there's something that you do just off rip that is going to get you in the door. That for him was production. He just happened to be the very best in the game and he didn't want to just be known as that. Why? Because his creativity does not box him in. Mm. He doesn't like to be boxed in. He doesn't like to be controlled. So to sit there and say you are only a uh, producer, he didn't like that. He was like, yo, I'm a producer and a rapper. Yo, I'm a producer and a rapper, and I'm going to get into clothing. I'm a producer, rapper, and clothing, sneakers. Even, uh, of, what, a few days ago, he's opening a cosmetic line. So, I'm just, hey, hey, hey. hold on, hold on, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me play this. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney. I'm just saying. He knows how to use impact. That's, that's, that's for sure. That is for sure. That's for sure. He definitely had the arrogance to say that, though, because I honestly like if you're not flirting with with crazy, I don't think you have, you know, the impact that he's had. You know, it, it makes sense. I get it. But I, I just feel that uh, and I love that we're having this heated debate early on. I'd love to know what some people are thinking. Uh, I'm well, looking over here to see what they're what, saying. What's but, the people? What's the people saying? What's the people? Con look, Tiff says. Kanye's always gave himself props that were higher than what's public opinion, uh, public's uh, opinion of him. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, but I guess nobody knows that because they don't listen to the public. If he has a louder voice, it's like he almost, you know, mutes them out. I, I get it. I get it. So, okay. So here, here. Let's do this. I'm going to play one more. I'm play. I'm going to play something else. We talk because I feel like we can stay on this topic for a very yeah, long yeah. time. So I'm going to go straight to another clue of what he may be. OK, so put in the comments right now. Put in the comments right now. What do you feel my man is a pilot, a flight attendant, grounds crew or air traffic controller? OK, um, for all the new people, don't worry, we'll catch you up. Um, but here's the next video. Anybody ever said in life would be a disadvantage to me, I'm going to make it my advantage. When I was playing basketball, everybody said I was too short. I'm killing them with the scoops. You know what I'm saying? Everybody says, you can't rap because you're a producer. Okay. Oh, I ain't hear that beat. Oh, yeah, I know. I produced it. <laughs> I just rapped on it before you got a chance to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to use everything that everybody says that I can't do, or, and I'm going to flip it to the positive. Moose. I've never believed in that strategy, though. I've just never, I've never been a believer of it. A believer of that what I'm, strategy? That I'm going to use down. what people are saying poorly or negatively about me to fuel me to do good. I just feel like it, it so eventually. Way. Take a f no, <laughs> I just never believed in that. And I know that's like you use that. I know. I know that's like, and I'm not discounting it because I know a lot of people have used you know, the, the branches thrown at them to light the fire to get them going. I get it. But me personally, mm -hmm. I just feel that at some point, everyone reroutes. Kanye rerouted from realizing that, hmm, okay, I've done this mm -hmm. and I've amounted all of these material things and success and yada, 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 mm -hmm. but I'm not happy. And that's when he had to neutralize. I don't know if he still has that same mind frame or that same way of thinking today. Well, this, yeah, I was about to say, this is early, okay? okay. We're, show, we're showing early stuff. Okay. So we, there, there's always, there's different shifts of Kanye, right? There's mm -hmm. different shifts. Now he's showing 
what he does. He's showing his motives. Like if somebody says this about me, I'm going to do this. I'm always going to show the positive. So I'm just saying he he always flips it. And sure. I think I think he semi does that still till this day. Yeah, I don't think I could be a fashion designer. Watch me. Yeah, I don't think I could charge these numbers on my on my holy shirt, super holy, like nine holes, and I'm gonna charge. And I was gonna say by holy, you mean holes in yeah, them, yeah, not holes holy in like them. it was sprinkled yeah, no, no, with no, holy not, water. Not praise God, <laughs> not praise God. Yeah. Um, yeah. but like he is able to take whatever people are saying about him and doing the complete opposite. Granted, he's gonna do some rants about it, right? He may do something outrageous about it because he's very outspoken. Um, but at the same time, he does kind of flip everything that people say that he can't do. It's been pro- it's a it's a proven fact. Every single thing. I'm just saying. You make a good argument. I, I, oh. I, you make a good argument. I get. I just feel at some point, everyone who takes that way of thinking gets to a level in, the, in their life where they're like, hmm. I got to neutralize. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. All right. You ain't got the answers. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look, so, all right, let me, let me get into the work ethic because this is, you know, this is my favorite part. So, we said 21 Grammys, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, I, I've said, I, I don't have a particular order of what my favorite Kanye album is per se but there was a shift from college dropout late registration um and then graduation happened which is cool but um 808 heartbreaks and whatever people want to say about it was not my favorite was not but then you had dark twisted fantasy came out and was deemed a beyond classic right um he had something to prove after um everything that's happened his mom died in 2007 which we clearly saw a shift from the super happy i'm a rapper i'm a rapper i'm a rapper look at me uh backpack kind of guy to then this like mullet suit vibe it was weird at first i don't know what happened um so but that album right there with people from john legend to uh, rick ross Nicki minaj and stuff like that let me let me just let me just get to the video. Let me let me just get to the video. Regiment was like focus energy, yo. And actually, I never seen that from a rapper before. Just grinding every day. The song like Power took five thousand hours, like literally five thousand man hours, to do this one record. And it's that's the amount of time I was put into every song. It's it's not only his talent that took him to the top. I gotta say, it's his focus, yo. 5,000 hours on a song when he was um, and people have seen it lately but back then when it came to that album he flew out everybody that was a part of that album to Hawaii and he had them laser focus on this particular album right um, his, his work ethic when creating something and how he pushes people um one of the people that he works with was like look when i'm rapping i don't really like the nice kanye like oh okay you know you should do it again he was like yo that sucks go try it again right he said it um he said it to rick ross which i'll show in a little bit he said to rick ross who was at the time throwing anthems and he was like, go, oh, do it again, right? Um, I, he always, and 
in one of the en interviews, he said, yo, I have something to prove. And so I have to create a body of work that will shut up anybody, that no one can say that I'm not the best at what I do, right? And like I said earlier, he had a brainstorming team. He had people from RZA to Q-Tip to uh, Sci High, the he had Rihanna, he had top people, it, Drake, he had in, on the flashing lights thing, he had Alicia Keys, Rihanna, and Drake saying flashing lights. Like, mm -hmm. what? Like, whatever you want to say about Kanye, his, what he produces, raps, beats, whole bodies of work, you can't deny the quality of it. You can't deny the man hours that was put into it compared to other people. So, Musa, I, I, I'll let you go into that one, but yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that album, that album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but me specifically, what I think about that, Nikki, because I know we've mentioned this concept of work ethic before, mm -hmm. uh, I want to approach it from a different standpoint today and just really talk about why you must absolutely love and find energy through that thing that you say you want to be known for. Okay. Because you can't devote 5,000 man hours to something that doesn't refuel you, right? At, at some point, you're going to get drained or just kind of be left out of creativity. Whatever is required to make that thing great, mm -hmm. you're not going to have it. You're not going to do it. So I think it's really this concept of when we th talk about authenticity, and, and I'm, I'm really starting to make that a a, a main focus for me again because I realize it's the concept of staying true to your belief regardless of any external pressure. That's the concept of authenticity. So that if if I'm Kanye West and I say I want to be a rapper, mm -hmm. regardless of what people are telling me about what I believe, I have to stay true to that. That's expressing the power or living in your authenticity. So I think when it comes to work ethic today you really got to think about it from the standpoint like yo am i involved in something that is so me that regardless of how long i do it for i can't run out like it, it refuels me in the process i can live through this that's the only way you reach a level of genius that he's done right there I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Those soundboards, I tell you. I'm saying, but look, so the the thing with that too is what I love is that he, like other greats, because of how he works through his creativity, it forced other people to do the same, right? It forced top people. Like, RZA was already a legend. Like, no one can mess with Wu-Tang. Everybody knows that line, I'm not gonna say it, right? But um, no one can mess with Wu-Tang. And even him was like, yo, I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen, and it made me want to do something different because I've never seen something like that. And so I wanted to play uh, the Rick Ross one because it really showcases what what I mean by this. So Kanye allowed so many different artists and producers to collaborate, come in one room, you know what I mean? And, and not just for the artists themselves, but for the fans. What did it mean for you to be a part of that? It most definitely means some of the, the best work I ever created. You know, at that time, I most definitely had huge anthems. But, you know, like I said, in Devil in a New Dress, when I recorded that verse for the first time, he came in, heard it. Um, he told me he thought I could do better. Really? And, and he walked out and I looked at him like that. And then I wrote another one. And the, the, the second verse I wrote is the one you hear on the album, which a lot of people consider one of Rose best verses. So. I'm just saying, like pushing people, like people from like Chance the Rapper on Life of Pablo, 
right? Saw that. The mm-hmm. the album was late because Chance was trying to get it right. You know, uh, Pusha T um, forced him to change his verses multiple times. These are top tier rappers. These are top of their game. Like, and Kanye's like, no, why? Because they respect his creative genius. They respect, like, I see what you're doing. I see what you're molding. And you have credibility out of this world with six albums already or however many that he had at the time, right? You can only respect that when somebody is laser focused in getting a masterpiece out and you put other people who are great in one room, you're going to feel as if you have to stand, you have to play the part. And so that's why I feel like when it comes to things like this, it's really important who you in the room with. It's really important, like whatever project that you're working, if you don't have people around you that's like pushing you to do better or you're just cruising by, like you gotta, you gotta really tell on that. You gotta mm. really show your cards. Every single time that people talked about Kanye, and when it came to his creative process on any album, they were like, yo, pure genius. It made me, I, like, I was sweating on what to create. We're all in our own little booths. We're, we're listening to the melodies. We're trying to come up with things together. We get the topics and we're going. And you have to look at who you have around you. And are you like, ah, I'll take care of it later? Or are you like, yo, if I don't do it, this person's going to do it and outshine me. So I got to I gotta stay in the par. Like, I can't be in this masterpiece of a project and be uh, the last that people talk about. I can't be in the middle that people talk about. You know, you, the, the creativity level of Kanye pushed so many people and freed so many people to be their true selves. Because when you have a, a person who doesn't get limited to what other people deem as a rapper, what people deem as a rapper, or producer, or what a hip hop album is supposed to be, then you create classics like what he's done. And those are the new standards of hip hop uh, albums. Those are the standards of how to create a collab. Everybody else who did it after was cute. Mm -hmm. DJ Khaled, no no shade, was cute. But can you compare DJ Khaled's collabs to what Kanye did on Dark Twisted uh, Fantasy? Nope, because Khaled ain't rapping. And that's why I give credit to Kanye. (laughs) I I think Khaled is a great, like, orchestrator. Like he puts mm-hmm. people in the room, do what you need to do. I'll put it, I'll put this here, puzzle maker, boom, I'm, I'm good. But Kanye truly knew what it take to make a masterpiece based off what he felt was a masterpiece. He saw what other greats were doing and he instantly said in the other uh, clip, I'm doing it different. I'm absolutely going to do it different to where Jay-Z is on the album. He's not on Jay-Z's album. Jay-Z is yeah. on the album to later on then do a collab project. Yeah. I want to do this for a moment because I'm starting to see a reoccurring theme pretty much from every single episode we've done dating back to, of course, MJ mm-hmm. and The Last Dance. Mm-hmm. Let's go back and forth maybe for like three apiece of some of you know we again we hear that cliche success leaves clues yep. what's one of the consistencies you've seen from all the brands and businesses and, and personalities and individuals we've broke down what's one common trait or attribute that you've seen consistently across the board almost identical with every single one of them work ethic absolutely the disgusting work ethic yep yep work ethic is one of them mine i'm gonna say this concept of pushing others Yep. I feel like MJ did it, Kobe did it, everybody has pushed the people around them to give them more. So, okay, devil's advocate on that. 
Mm-hmm. Can we honestly say that 50 Cent did that successfully? Or did he carry the two? Hmm. Because if we look at if we look at a Jordan, Scotty held his own. You know? Yeah. Rodman held his own at times. Uh Steve Kerr held his own when he was allowed to play and do things, right? Um who do we who else we talk about? Beyond Kobe. Kobe. Shaq, uh, all of the the, the late he, he didn't carry them. He made them better. Like there, there's several players that are like, "Yo, I am a better player because of Kobe." Right? Um, Beyonce. Well, Kelly Rowland made her her own lane. Right? Michelle did the whole gospel thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Um. Though many people say Beyonce in them, I understand that, right? Um, You still can't sit there and say that those other two didn't try to hold their part. Right. Um, Kanye doesn't necessarily have a team team, but when he did create them, they they went to different levels. Sure. Right? Sure. And I Um, guess that's what I'm trying to say. You know, like that that element of. But what what I'm saying is, did Fifty do that? I feel like why we may not see the success or the fruit of his labor. He had he's done something to at least bring them to the level that they were accepted at that time. Like I, who I think, knows think, who those two would be if it wasn't for Fifty. So I think if we look corner. at Fifty, then we would just have to look at the people from Power. We may mm-hmm. have to take. G unit as a whole as a as a L, right? But what he's done with power and being able to branch off to like three, four spin-offs and created different opportunities for these actors and actresses, then you could say on on that part, absolutely. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at just G unit, no. I can't I can't intelligently say that. That's fair. Name another one. Name another one, and then we'll move on. Uh, name another what? What are we naming? What are we? Uh, another attribute from uh, just like that same pattern or that thing that we've seen carry on through almost all of the people that we've talked about as we've studied their, you know, their personalities, and the whole nine. Um, I would have to say, um, jerk-like features. Mm. I'm I'm going to say that. I'm th- I'm sorry. I'm going to say jerk like features. Um people called Beyonce a dictator at times. Um 50 Cent was known as a jerk at times. Jordan was known as a jerk at times and Kobe was known as a jerk at times. So you're sitting here telling me to be one of the greats, you got to be a jerk. I get it. I'm on, I'm here for No, you. no. I hope people 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 <laughs> People, <laughs> Gee, Louis, I can't, I can't agree with that statement. But uh, moving I, on, you, you can't, you can't sit here and say that I wasn't lying about it. They all but had that trait. That's why I'm saying, and that's why my previous statement, I said the attribute was they pushed those around them. That's what I was trying to say. Not do, necessarily because I don't want do you to have condone to or at least put my stamp of approval on that it's okay to be a jerk to people. I'm I, not saying personally. That. Oh no, no, no! I'm not saying. There's other ways. There's other ways. But what I'm saying is the top people that we're talking about. And maybe True. if you think about some others, were at certain times, were they jerks? We can mention a whole separate person, Steve Jobs. I mean, we already know what the, you know, we already know what the, hmm. I'm just saying, I'm, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I don't. Because you know why? My whole thing is, what if that's not who you are? But you're studying these people, so you just, like, hit the genetically modified jerk well, gene no, to, so, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you can win without it. No, so this is the thing. 
the great thing about how we're breaking things down, you see what has been working so far, right? right? We are normally the bad traits of our parents we try not to take, right? So we could be learning from these people and possibly not get the bad traits. And we may have a whole new lineup of greats coming soon that don't have jerk tendencies. I'm not sitting here saying does it to only be a great, to be part of that great wall, you have to be a jerk. That's not what I'm sitting here saying, okay? What I'm sitting here saying is that these people have done it amazing. No one can knock their greatness. No one can knock their success. Kanye became a billionaire this year, okay? Owns completely his Yeezy brand, right? Hands down. Mm -hmm. He has done multiple rants. He, to his core people, can be sometimes a jerk. But I will not sit here and say that's what is needed because we have a fearless leader who is not a jerk. True. 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 Mic drop, well said. Fair. Is that fair? Touche. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just, I'm just. Lower your tone. Just here. It's a good, it's a good conversation though. I mean, I, I think it's needed though, because my whole thing is I'm realizing that I never want to say something that I don't complete the thought and then it can be received as, oh, so I guess it's okay for me to then become this way because my intention, although the intention is good, I still don't think that it makes the approach okay. So, right. So. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, who deems the definition of jerk? Who are we to say that they were jerks? Are we sensitive? Well, he, I don't think you even forget the fact that whether someone is in their feelings or not. If someone treats you in a way that violates your core values, you're automatically going to turn around and say this person's out of pocket. Okay, fair. Fair, but there's two people. One person said, you know what? I see the goal. We just got to get there. And the other person's like, yo, why are you going to talk to me like that? Why Why are you, why are you treat me like this? This is. There's such a nicer way to go. You could just ask me. You can just mm -hmm. ask me. I will get it done, right? Who's right and who's wrong? Two different people. Hearing the same thing, same situation, who's right and who's wrong? Who's the leader? That's my question. Kanye. Kanye is the leader. One person said, yo, the album, let's just say, the album got to be done. It got to be done this way. My, my bars weren't up to par. I just redid them. Boom. I Now I have the hottest verse on the album. Mm-hmm. Why are you gonna treat me that way? I thought I did a good hot sixteen. The sixteen was hot. He's a jerk. But we also don't have proof that that's how he said it. But th this is the thing. What proof do we have of any of these situations where people are saying that they are a jerk? Granted. Well, I mean, outside of the Kobe and Jordan examples of people literally saying, "Yeah, I did not," you know, he wasn't a, a nice person. And then, but uh, at the same time, there's been people that say he was a little bit stern, but, and then gave their own reason. They didn't call him a jerk. They didn't say anything. He's like, yo, he was, he was focused on what needed mm -hmm. to happen. All he cared about was this. All care Jordan cared about was the chip. All Kobe cared about was the chip. And once you understand that part about them, I granted it's it's a two-way relationship. Please understand how to talk to me, and I'll understand how to talk to you. Exactly. I get that. I'm not mm -hmm. disagreeing with it. But why do some people understand it and deem it as fine, and others deem it as wrong? The same because thing as what categorizes creativity. What we think is creative a super dope drawing or something like that 
but a banana taped on a wall could deem as mm. dummy. This is dumb, but somebody paid G's for that because they thought that was them. art. I think it's right. the perspective of everything. That's why I can't sit here and say Kanye in certain aspects and certain parts where he's wearing the whole MAGA hat thing and where, um, you know, he does certain rants. I can't sit here and intelligently say that he's wrong. I disagree with some of them. I disagree. But to sit here and box him in when he explained, yo, the only reason why I wore like the MAGA hat was because I, it symbolizes just freedom. I don't, I didn't attach it to a person. I didn't attach it to what has happened. I attach it to freedom. So in that context, in his perspective, are you still just looking at the action or are you just claiming as if, yo, that's his perspective. He has his right to have his opinion. Oh, by all means. But, but notice my question to you was who's the leader? Kanye. Right. Be, no, but but I'm just saying, even outside of any example, mm -hmm. at when you get to a certain level of status, specifically leadership, okay, and you and you look at yourself as a leader, mm -hmm. much of what you do, from my perspective, and again, this is my take, and this is why I think this is a good exchange, mm -hmm. is that much of what you do isn't solely about you. So if a hat that you wear mm -hmm. makes you feel like freedom, mm -hmm. but to 25% of the population, it represents systemic racism. Mm -hmm. You should choose not to wear the hat yes. because those are the people that you say you are representing or a leader of. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always make the case of take the position of the people, especially if you're in a place of power yes. or a position of leadership. That's my whole take with it. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. And, and, and I, I'd like to think I'm more of a a logic over emotion person but i just think from a leadership standpoint mm -hmm. the context of the conversation has to change indeed but at the same time you're talking about certain people like a kanye who creates his own world right who doesn't really like cares but doesn't care about the outside world and what other people think Right. So, yes, he has as a role model, as an influencer, as a leader, he has responsibilities. But we put that responsibility on him. He didn't take that responsibility. Mm. So you're saying that they can't automatically the responsibility isn't automatically deemed once you get to that position. Like Ooh, you can get where, to that position and be like, what hey, law? I ain't trying to be that for you. What law is it? that when you reach a certain influence level that you have to do this well it's not in law that's exactly. probably why it's, a, it's, it's creating all the, the the confusion absolutely so you have the choice because all he is is a human being he is the same as us he's just done things differently he's just got to certain levels quicker than us but he is a human being by all means, absolutely. And so we're putting responsibility on him when he didn't take a role of, hello, I am going to be the president of this. No. He is a rapper. He is a producer. He is a fashion designer. He is has impact based off his clothing of what other people will wear. He has impact based off his raps and his production skills of what people listen to. There's hmm. nowhere in entertainment business that you have to follow the steps exactly of what a rapper does. So, it's cool to have your opinion, right? But who are we to say what's right or wrong when all he is is a human being that we gave the responsibility of you should act this certain way because you are in this level. We, I don't agree. That's the thing. Like, I don't agree with a lot of things that he's done or said. And 
there's times that he makes things right. And there's times where he shows that, yo, I am not as bad as you really think I am. True. But when it comes to this entertainment business, when it comes to this whole social media thing, we are making people famous who may not need it to be famous. Who may not need it to be in leadership's position. They may have wanted to just be cool in their little own world with their little own tribe. Granted, some people are going to build a bigger tribe hmm. because of who they are and who they attract. There's going to be people who stop following them and come back or people who are diehard people that are going to always follow. Them. There's diehard Trump people. There's diehard uh, Obama people. There's diehard Al Allen Iverson people. There's diehard uh, Tony Hawk's people. Like Practice? Right. So, I'm just saying. So we, I think we focus, not we, but people focus on the responsibilities of uh, this quote unquote responsibilities that we supposedly give on these influencers when they don't necessarily have a book that tells them all their responsibilities. That's the whole point of being an innovator. That's the whole point of being a leader is that you create your own path and you show people what it's supposed to be through your lens and through your ways. Look, I'm going to state my point because I know we're going to have to move on. I know as a creative, you're constantly looking to push new boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you may not even consciously know that you're violating a red flag or just a place that's out of pocket. Yes. But I like I like what someone said in the comment. Hmm. To much to who much is given, much is required. He has a responsibility since he has a platform, quote unquote, like that. Right? That's my whole thing. Mm -hmm. He should whoever you are, you should know that you're not oblivious to the fact that you have influence and power. At that level in the game, with a brand and a reach and a business and all of that. At that magnitude, you should know how much people will act, respond, and move on what you're saying. Can you not focus to at least direct the majority of that energy to the greater good of humanity? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying, look, ain't all of what and any of what you're saying. Go I ain't got the answers, reason. man. You ain't you got the answers. Kanye. I, you I ain't got, got the answers. answers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's my that's my whole approach to it, man. That's my whole approach. So can to I it. have a devil's advocate to this one? Go. So we're, we're going to stay on the whole platform kind of vibe. You have a responsibility. So let, let's be real. And I want I want everybody in the comments in this one. So you're sitting here saying that everybody had to talk about Black Lives Matter situations just because they have a platform. Uh, what, are, are we talking about the the degree or the you, you, look the the responsibility based on you have a platform, mm -hmm. right? So just because you have a platform, who is who are we to say that this is what you're supposed to do because you have a platform? There are certain people who shouldn't speak on certain topics quote unquote, shouldn't, but they do, or they did because they thought they had to because of the platform that they have created. And some of them looked very dumb. Oh, beautiful. Oh, 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 so, so, I'm so, I'm so glad you asked the question. Look, I spoke on this on my story a couple of days ago and I said, you should not speak on something mm -hmm. if you are simply echoing a belief of what somebody else said on their channel, their platform, or the media. Mm -hmm. I listen. Okay. Since we're going to go there. No, since no, no. Go so there, stay there. Healthy. No, no, no. It. Right. So stay there. So no, 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 let me tell you. Okay. Go, go, you. go. I I serve and support a community that is predominantly black. Yes. Under the ETA umbrella, without a doubt, I would push as high as eighty-five percent of the community is eighty is black. Yes. There is no question what side of defense I'm on as it relates to Black Lives Matter. Right. No question whatsoever. Right. 
Why was I silent until almost June 11th? I didn't say a peep. I showed some level of support, but you know why I didn't say anything? Hmm. Number one, I, as someone, I didn't want to make any of what I was going to say about me. Hmm. And more importantly, I didn't just want to be a soundboard or an echo for what everyone else was saying. I educated myself. Mm. So it's not because I said, oh, I have a big platform, then I have a responsibility that I must come out and be Mother Teresa. No, 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 no. I said, let me formulate my own opinion mm -hmm. and, 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 and communicate it in a way that is true to my core. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying. So you might come back and say, well, what if Kanye's core or true opinion is that MAGA is freedom? Cool. Cool. And I get that. But again, when you take into consideration the people you serve. So like imagine if what I thought went against the 80 percent or the community that I serve at large, would I have still went out and said what I believe? Mm -hmm. I, I, the way I am, I either decide to leave the community or say what I feel. So look, I'm not. Hot topic. I'm not disagreeing with you. All right, this is the Hot thing. Topic, this, yeah. is, this is this is the healthy conversation. So, here's my question to you. If you had 13 million followers, would you have talked about the topic sooner? Would you have felt like you had a responsibility to talk sooner about it? Say it again, please, because I'm reading the comments and I almost totally overlooked what you said. My bad. So if you had 13 million followers, right, would you mm -hmm. have taken the same amount of time to slightly talk about it? Or would you have talked about it sooner in a more, um, in a more, in a bigger way? Yeah. To be honest with you, having lived through this experience, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say if, but when I, I'm going to say when something like this happens next time, mm -hmm. next time, what I'm going to say is I'm educating myself on what's happening. Once I formulate my opinion, I will say exactly where I stand. Because again, as the way I'm wired, I cannot magnify a problem if I can't come with a solution. And we talked about that. So a large part of me waiting was to say, well, what can I do mm -hmm. to contribute to the solution and not just say, yeah, mm -hmm. systemic racism has existed for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to speak out of pocket on this, but I just didn't want to be a person who is going to say that mm -hmm. without saying, oh, but here's my contribution. Here are my donation receipts. Mm -hmm. Here are the, the, the pieces of trainings and the modules that I'm going to incorporate into some of my keynotes and trainings so that regardless of who's sitting in the audience, they can begin to understand what is the solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think next time with a larger platform, what I will say is I'm going to communicate my process as opposed to maybe saying, oh, yeah, let me just sit back silent and study. So I, that's what I would do differently for sure next time. But I think just just a complete silence probably not the best approach okay 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 I got nothing. Shout out to Kanye. I got, i'm not saying anything i'm just saying that you like how you just said you put rules towards how you're going to approach your platform and when you're yes. going to speak and when you're not going to speak no one told you Regardless of how many followers you have, regardless of your influence and everything like that, no one, you didn't make that an influence on when you're going to speak. Mm -hmm. So why do we give responsibilities based off following numbers or based off influence? Because it didn't change your situation. You knew that you needed to say something, but there's still a process of how you're going to do it. You're not going to feel as in the next day or the following day that you have to say something. Because you in right now has a certain amount of influence and you still took your time. Yes. And you said it in a way that you needed to say it. 
You didn't join the bandwagon or anything like that. You did it the way you wanted to do it. Someone may say you were wrong. Someone could possibly say that. Sure. So my whole point based off what um, I forgot who even said it, right, is that just because you have a platform, we are no one to say how to run your platform. We cannot crucify certain people because of what they say and what they do on their platform. We have the, the option of following or unfollowing, listening or not listening. You know what? I, and I, I really, this will be the last thing I say for real because I, I love this conversation, but I honestly think that if I can at least articulate it from the, the people's viewpoint, let's take it that way. I think some people felt betrayed because if I say I stand for this community mm -hmm. and in their time of need, I took the side of the oppressor. Imagine how your community and your people feel, though. Yes. It's like imagine you saying, yo, I believe deeply in personal brands. Everybody needs a personal brand. Yes. Everybody needs to create content. Mm -hmm. You got to try with, and do what you got to do from your phone, this, this and that. Mm -hmm. And then the moment the heater is under you. You just like, no, forget it. Forget your phone. You should have been using the, the red one. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, but what you mean? You've taught us this entire time to use the phone. Yes. So I think that's what happened there that you can't just say, you know, I stand with these people. I, I'm George Bush don't like black people, yada, 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 yada. Okay. But then when the heat is on, you take the other side and it's like, because then the people who help get you to your position or your platform, they feel betrayed two different people at the time the the kanye and and this is not um this is not an excuse per se <laughs> I'm not, this is not an excuse per okay, se okay, 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 but okay. are you going to sit here and say the person who said the same thing about george bush or whatever the george's it was right and who talk about trump however they however he wants to talk about it are the same kanye's well, you're talking about pre pre his mom's death and post mom death. Is yeah, that what you're referring to? Absolutely, absolutely. These play that certain situations play a role. Certain and we didn't really get into it, right? But because his mom died, he instantly became a certain different way. Agreed. Agreed. He also and I respect it, and, Look, he, and, and that's why I say, yo, after all. It's easy from our seat to be like, yo, you should have done this and this, that. I know, I know. But I think that's what makes for a good debate. It's it's to be able to speak on our values. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing true is that it's important to have your values predetermined mm -hmm. before you get to the spot. For people in our community and everyone who's probably tuned in right now, we all are aiming to get to higher levels of influence and impact. But are our values in place? Do we have those predetermined? So when the spotlight and questionable issues do arise, do we know what type of stance or how we're going to navigate that storm? So this is an opportunity because look, at the end of the day, this is not a debate about is Kanye a good guy or a bad guy. Mm -hmm. We're trying to produce something that can help people learn, educate themselves on what we can take away from him so that we can improve our personal lives, our brands and our businesses. Mm -hmm. And this is truth be told y'all, like this is why we're doing this, right? So what I'm seeing is that one of the things we can take away, predetermined values, y'all, where do you stand? How do you navigate these times? Uh, because I think it makes it much easier to speak out, to uh, take your opinion or state your opinion, but also make a stance. Because I think you can't, have a platform that large and speak out or even a platform small speak out but you can't support your opinion uh you know even in this in the in the in the other side of it and and if we're really gonna go there look at someone like candace owens right who people can't stand her guts right now i clicked on her page i didn't even know who she existed up until 12 hours ago i kid you not but or i didn't know who she was i should say but when i clicked on her profile she at least gives supporting evidence through her viewpoint as to why she's stating what she's stating. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I just want to say that 
if we are going to continue down this path, let's get our values in check. 